Hi, I'm Toby, and it is in the middle of the night where I'm making this video for the Instructable Anything Goes competitions. So, um, this is my latest design of my own NAS. For those who don't know what is NAS, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. It means that you can access your storage device via the internet. And this is my latest prototype that I'm designing. You can see this device is fully 3D printed and I optimize it for a few things. Back in 2018, I post an Instructable on Instructable.com featuring my DIY 3D printed NAS system that I designed with Raspberry Pi, some off-the-shelf components, and a 3D printer. So this year, I'm remaking this project for a few reasons. First of all, I want to try out the PCB services. Next one is that my university is starting to cut off Google Drive capacity, so I need to make my own NAS to store stuff I use to store on the Google Drive. And the third thing is that this is just one of my habits to actually participate in the Instructable Anything Goes competitions each year. So this year, I am joining with this project. Let me show you this particular NAS I designed. If you are a long-time Raspberry Pi user, you might notice that during the pandemic period, you can't buy any Raspberry Pi due to global chip shortage. When I'm designing this NAS, I choose to use a compatible design that works with most of the SVCs or single board computers on the market. And for this particular unit, I decided to go with the Orange Pi Zero. But it also worked with Orange Pi Zero Plus, Orange Pi Zero 2, and Raspberry Pi. And pretty much every SVC that you can find and fit inside this case. And for this unit, it is 3D printed using black PLA and screwed together with M3 screws. On the front, you will find a status LED and a hole purely for decorative purposes. There are also some cooling vents on the side where it is hidden behind the front panel. On the back, you will find the cooling fan intake, one USB port, and an Ethernet jack. The Ethernet jack for this particular unit can provide up to 100 megabit speed. However, if you choose another SBC like the Raspberry Pi 4 or the Orange Pi 02, you might get even higher access speed by utilizing the Gigabyte Ethernet on board. Let's open it up. The first thing you will notice after tearing off the front panel is the power regulation board as well as the ARM SBC hidden in the back cover. All PCB you see here are modular, which means you can replace them with anything you have lying around. You can pretty much put anything on this surface here where the power management board sits on. Let's say if you want to have another SBC or a microcontroller like ESP32 inside your case for some remote management purposes, you can also place them inside here. All of the PCBs are connected via these kinds of 4 pins SH2.54 connectors. These connectors carry power and data signal to different modules on this NAS. On the front here, you will see two pulling handles. These pulling handles are the hard disk trays. If you pull one out, you will notice that the hard disk is actually a part of the structural design of the hard disk tray itself. This tray is designed to print without any support materials. That being said, this makes it a relatively fragile print. So before you actually screw in the hard disk on the tray, I would not recommend applying too much force on any other side of the tray arm, or otherwise it will break easily. The hard disk is screwed in place with 6 M3x6 screws. And on the back here, you can see the SATA to USB adapters. These adapters are relatively cheap from China and they are using a chip called MA6116. After some googling, it seems that this is a SATA to USB 2.0 chip. Each of it can provide a maximum theoretical speed of 480 megabit per second access to the disk. And for those who are worrying about the read write speed on the disk right here, the software we are using named RSOS is also developed by myself. This OS is specifically designed for low speed storage device like this one. And this is why in the software design, we utilize the RAM and SD card on board of the SBC for buffering. 
In most of the time, when you are uploading a file with size smaller than the capacity of the RAM or the internal SD card, you won't actually notice the bottleneck from the USB adapter itself. This also helps save costs as most of the cheap SBC don't come with USB 3.0 or SATA port anyway. So let's get back to the power management board. The power management board in charge of converting the input voltage range from 12V to 24V into 5V and to 12V supply for the hard disk and the SBC. The PCB was manufactured by PCBWay. They are one of the best PCB manufacturers I know that can handle this kind of manufacturing requirements, including opening a square hole on the PCB right here. This square hole was originally designed for fitting in the pins on the variable resistor for the bug boost converter. However, the bug boost converter I use here are fixed voltage one, and this converter uses the XL6009, where you can find one online with relatively cheap price, and they are really generic, so you can pretty much use any of it you found online. The reason for supporting such a large input range is because I want the device to be able to power by USB Type-C PD specifications. If you have a Type-C PD power supply that can supply up to 60 volts lying around, you might notice that it can output up to 20 volt 3 amps. With a specific adapter and cables, you can pull 20 volt 3 amps out of this adapter and power your NAS through an unused gun chargers. Cool, right? You may also notice that the USB hoist output of the SBC is connected to the power management board. This is implemented as so to reduce the complexity of changing the SBC in the future. Let's say you want to use another SBC for this project. What you need to do is to wire up the SBC USB hoist to the correct pins on the converter board. And you don't need to wire up everything again from the ground up. Let's close it up and power it up. On the software side, we are using the Raspberry Pi OS or the Ambient as base, and on top of the Linux OS layer, we build our own sandbox system to provide another web desktop interface for daily use. I have been working on this project for around 5 years now, and it is getting much better recently. As this is not a video about my open source software project, I will just briefly describe what our OS is and what it actually does on our NAS system. RSOS project is a web desktop system that allows users to manipulate with their files easily through a web desktop interface. It is pretty much like Synology DSM but without the bottom layer that manages the hardware. On top of it, you got music and video player, photo viewers, PDF viewers, and even 3D model viewers, and utilities like camera apps that allow you to take pictures from your phone and stream it directly to your NAS without storing it on your smartphone internal memory. If you want to set up RAID using two of the hard disks, you can do so with standard Linux command and mount the final mount point into RSOS storage pool system. And this way, you can access your file from your browser anytime, anywhere. All of the build instructions, 3D models, and the software are open source. You can find them on Instructables and my GitHub page. If you are interested to build your own NAS at really, really low cost, feel free to follow these instructions and modify anything as you need. Hope this project can help you solve your storage problem as I do. See you.